Hey guys, on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the differences between hand polishing versus machine polishing. Now, a lot of you have emailed me and said, hey, I'm stuck at home, uh, I've washed the car a thousand times, I've waxed it a thousand times, but I still see these little, little ticks or little love marks in there and I wanna be able to take that out, but I don't necessarily wanna spend hundreds of dollars on a new machine, I wanna do it by hand. Is it possible? So this video is for you. That and a whole lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. First step, of course, is to actually have a clean panel. Now, in this case, it's pretty dirty. There's some bird poo over there, and there's definitely uh, some contamination on it. You can hear it right here. That's not dirt, that's actual contamination. Plus, I know this car, this is my father-in-law's car, and I know exactly where it's parked, and there's tons of birds, and it's parked underneath a tree, so it gets a bit of sap. The point of the story is, if you're gonna do things by hand, you really need the area clean. Why? When you're using a machine and you're polishing, and if it has a little bit of contamination, something that you would get off with clay, uh, that pad can, on a machine can really kind of pick that up pretty quickly and then you can blow it out and move on. When you're using just your hand, meaning just your shoulder strength, anything that you can take off the paint uh, in terms of contamination will make that just a little bit easier for you because you'll see by the end of the video, I I'm never gonna poo poo as we call it or say, hey, you shouldn't hand polish. In fact, we're gonna go over a little bit of the history. It's just the main downside is it takes a little bit more time plus you're gonna put a lot of work on your body, meaning your own horsepower, which we'll chat about in a second. So anything that you can remove off of the paint to make it just a little bit easier is gonna make your life a whole lot easier when, uh, with respect to doing the entire car. So keep that in mind. Now real quick, I just wanna address a few things. A lot of people have asked me uh, via email, hey, where are all your videos? We haven't seen them in a week or two or three. Uh, and the reason is very simple. I've been in the process of building my dream facility uh, so that I can film on a regular basis and bring cars in and kind of enjoy myself a little bit more and certainly take the uh, pressure off my knees with all those, uh, with the lifts that I have in there. Uh, and it's gonna be very exciting, but it's been delayed as anyone who's ever built anything in their life in terms of construction. It's new to me, but yeah, it's, it's a very uh, intense, let's just leave it at that process. I have the whole thing documented. I'm gonna shoot uh, a very long film and, and, and post it up for you guys so you can kind of go along with me. Uh, but we're delayed, so I haven't been able to bring any cars in, so I haven't been able to shoot. So this one here, like I said earlier, is my father-in-law's, um, and so I was able to do a little bit here and answer some questions about hand polishing because we're stuck at home because of the whole pandemic. So. That's a little bit of the backstory. Plus, if you want to see uh, uh, a little bit of what, I'm, of what I'm doing with respect to the building, you can sign up for the Ammo NYC Studio channel, which is basically a behind the scenes nerd channel of what I'm doing. Uh, we're doing live feeds on there. We're doing, uh, I'm walking around with the camera, it's all shaky and you can see the inside of the building and kind of follow along. So there's my little bit of uh, update of what's going on with me, but just stay tuned, hang tight. We have monster videos coming out and it's gonna be every single week, uh, just lots of cool things. So I appreciate your patience. Anyhow. Let's get back into this and I'll show you how to hand polish your car. Yeah, it actually works quite well and I think you guys are gonna like the results. Step one, of course, is to clean the surface of the paint. Now, in this case, because I'm demonstrating the technique on the hood, I'm quickly cleaning the surface with ammo frothy and a microfiber towel. Once most of the heavy junk is removed, I quickly clayed the paint using another round of frothy as the lubricant. Now, I've started to document all the cars I'm working on in sort of a Rolodex file type system directly on my iPad. Now, these days, I'm juggling around so many conversations and videos and construction schedules that I'm forgetting the specific details of each car I'm working on. So if you remember from a video a few weeks ago about the latest tools and technology, I featured an app called Mobile Tech RX and it was founded by a PDR guy or a paintless dent removal guy. I'm using their customer management system to basically keep a picture log of everything that I'm doing to jog my memory in the future. So after that video aired, they actually reached out to me, meaning the corporation emailed me and said, hey, it does a lot more than just customer relations. It also handles your accounting, your business finances. It automates this marketing for the detailers and the you know paintless dent guys and the windshield, that kind of thing. So this week, I'm going to go in and try to play with it a little bit more. It sounds super cool, and I'll give you updates as I understand more. Anyhow, let's understand a little bit more about the history of hand polishing before we go over the four essential tips. Let's back up a little bit and talk about where the history comes from. In terms of hand polishing, I would say a few decades ago uh, when paint was less dense or I would softer is, is a better word, maybe single stage is the word I might want to use as well. You could go in with a hand polish and go like this, you pick up your pad and it would be red if the car, if the truck or whatever was red and you were doing some work to it just by this movement or one horsepower, whatever you want to call it, one arm power. Um, and the reason that people did a lot of that was 
rotary polishers at the time, uh, and still today to some degree, are big and heavy and strong and torquey, and it would kind of make people nervous, which is completely understandable. So they said, hey, you know what? I want to go out and love on my car. I'm going to do it by hand. And that was sort of the norm. To me, that totally makes sense. Now you fast forward to modern times, meaning uh, mid to late 80s and going forward till today, we have a thing called clear coat on our paint. A lot, of, a lot of you guys know that. There's paint underneath, meaning this one is blue, metallic, whatever, red, green, orange, whatever. And then on top of it is a very thin, dense or hard layer of clear coat on top of it. And the reason that's an issue is that's a catalyzed process. So it makes it very hard. So when you come in with a hand polish, it makes it a lot more difficult. So that's what we're working on today. So you can see Thinking about it from a history or historical perspective, the hand polishing has become less and less and less. Why? Because we have these catalyzed surfaces, and then we have the invention, of course, of the dual action polisher, and then the large throw dual action polisher, which kind of mimics, to some degree, the same power as the rotary. So we got the fear away of the rotary. We came up with the dual action uh, polisher, partly because the clear coat systems, or the, I should say the paint systems have changed, and they've introduced a denser, harder thing called clear coat, which protects the paint from oxidizing. But you see where the history came? So now that we're in the, now that we're in the future, I'm still saying we can polish this by hand, and I'm gonna show you a couple of the steps, but understanding the history and why do we stop polishing? In fact, some of the biggest or the best, uh, the Riddler Award, the most amazing, beautiful cars in the world, Derek Bemis, Kevin Brown, Jason Rowe, all these guys who do these crazy cars, a lot of them are done by hand. If you watch Kevin Brown, I don't even know, I can't, I can't even think of the video, but if you see him come in, he'll, he'll wrap his finger around, right, a, a cloth, and he'll go in, let's say, around the emblems or something. I've, see, I've literally watched him at SEMA do it for like 10 hours or something to the point where I'm like, oh my gosh, Kevin. But Kevin's on a whole other planet. That's why he's got forearms like rocks. But the point is, he does a lot of that with, with, um, you know, with his finger and uh, using products like uh, 110 and 210 from Meguiar's. That's kind of my go-to uh, for this particular type of, of work. So anyways, that's sort of the backstory. I'm going to go through here. There's a few little tricks here and there, but it's really not that complicated. It's more of a mental mindset. Let me show you the time difference. I'm going to do this one over here with a dual action polisher and show you how quick it is, meaning like boom. And then I'm going to do this entire side, hopefully if I don't run out of gas, by hand. And I'll show you the difference before and after, and you guys make a decision. Okay, tip number one is to use lots of liquid. In this case, I'm using the SMAT compound M110 from Meguiar's. You're using more liquid to help manage the residue because the surface area of the microfiber towel touching the surface is typically smaller than that of a flat six inch microfiber pad. On a side note, I'm using microfiber because it's great at cutting due to all the fibers and it's less slippery than using foam as the applicator, but either one is acceptable. Also, keep in mind that I'm timing the process to get a rough idea of the differences between hand versus machine in overall time spent. After 10 to 15 straight line passes, tip number two is to use a different towel to wipe or buff off the residue. I try to use different color towels here to avoid confusion as the towel count will quickly add up when you're doing this by hand. Tip number three is to be sure to rotate the towel before applying ample liquid again. This will avoid clogging the fibers with residue and always working from a clean section of the towel to maximize your cut. Rotating your towel is similar in concept to blowing out the microfiber cutting pad with compressed air. Once done, the compounding phase took approximately 18 minutes by hand. Once pleased with the reduction of the heavy swirls, you'll notice the compounding marks left behind, which is normal. So to minimize those compounding marks, the last step and tip number four is to use less product and fewer passes for the final application. To do this, I switched from compound to polish and used a new microfiber towel to avoid cross-contamination from the compound. The final polish took approximately eight minutes, and the left side of the hood compared to the untouched right side was significantly better. So in other words, hand polishing is effective. Now for test number two, I use the traditional large throw DA with a microfiber cutting pad. Prime the pad first by hand, then blow out the excess with compressed air or wipe with a microfiber towel. Next, add three dots of compound on speed three and a half to four. With the timer running, I worked a two by two section in my normal fashion.
After step one, compounding, I turned the lights off and compared the left side, which was compounded and polished by hand, versus the right side that was only compounded by machine. But you can see there's a little bit of a halo going north and south. I can't point to it. Uh, going up and down around the halo there, the circle of the light. Where here, there isn't. And in person, if you're looking at it with your eyeballs, you're like, oh, wow, you can really see the difference pretty blatantly. Now, this side over here is compounded and polished while this side is just compounded so right off the bat you can see you're just getting a lot more refinement here why because that microfiber pad over here i shut the lights off just so i could see the microfiber pad over here squeegees the the paint much better than let's say the, the endless microfiber towels that are on my on my uh, windshield over there so you just get a much better job it's now this looks a thousand times better this side than it did before but even after compounding, this side already looks better than the compound and polish on this side. Hopefully that makes sense. But uh, it's pretty eye-opening what uh, these machines can do these days. The even distribution of weight and power with the machine creates a super thin layer of compound that is, again, evenly squeegeed across the surface, leading to a smooth or more refined finish, creating less haze. Now, does this mean you can't get a super refined finish by hand? No, of course you can, but not nearly as quick and easy as with a machine. This took about 10 minutes and 30 seconds to compound. Next, I polished with a yellow foam pad and 210. Now, this took less time because polish tends to have less abrasive and is more lubricated, so it can go a bit further before it starts loading up. In other words, it's typical to cover a little bit more area with a given quantity of polish than, say, compound. I finished up this demo in about 6 minutes or so. Once pulling the tape, the difference was quite obvious. Look closely at the outline of the light again. The hand-polished side on the left was significantly better than it was when it started. Some love marks were gone and some were reduced, but it still had some super fine lines encircling the light. The machine side was nearly 90% flawless in just a few minutes with less physical work while consuming less product. To hammer my point home, I hand-polished the faded headlights and yellow oxidized plastic came off easily. This is a good example or analogy of how older paints reacted. Again, this is just an analogy, but in this case, the plastic lens is much softer than that of the clear coated surface. So you can see how quickly just a few wipes on the lens created a huge difference. Same idea or concept on pre-catalyzed paints and why it was more common to hand polish back then. It was effective and relatively easy. I repeated the same steps with a three inch DA polisher and created similar results. Notice how yellow the 3 inch pad became compared to the original white one on the right. Now the interesting note about the headlight example is both hand and machine compounding looked pretty much the same after step number one, unlike the harder paint or clear coats, further demonstrating that hand polishing on softer paints is somewhat similar to a machine. It was only until the paints became catalyzed or had clear coat that that gap between the two techniques widened so much that hand polishing on modern paint systems nearly has become extinct, but it's still possible. Okay, well, we're all finished up, and the bottom line is this. You can hand polish your car and get decent results. And you can use something called a cleaner wax by hand. Use a microfiber applicator or one of these and clean it up, and it will look better. It does. It looks much, much better. Um, and then put wax on it, and you're good to go. So that would look better than just waxing it. Hopefully that makes sense. But ultimately, the, the spread between the, the uh, uh, opportunity cost of time, how much time it costs you to do that, and the results, which this is a significantly, I would say anywhere from 10 to 15 percent better than doing it by hand and way less time and way less effort. You have to weigh that. I'm just giving you facts. I'm not trying to deter you from doing it or not. Um, ultimately, you have to be okay with it being better but not 100% perfection. Hopefully that makes sense and it doesn't deter you. I do think you should go after it. If, you're, if you weren't gonna ever use a polisher ever and you don't wanna do that, then do it by hand. I think you guys would have fun. I think you'll build some muscle and get a, get a nice sweat going and I think it'd be, uh, your car will, will certainly look a whole lot better. And we proved that on the headlights too. That really came out well um, doing it by hand. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, make sure you get out there, clean your cars, wax them. It's summertime, go for a drive. Thanks for watching, I hope you're well.